Welcome to this week's OK at Work with myself, Sarah Sawyer, and my colleague, Russell Berger, both attorneys at Offit Kerman. And today we are talking about a hot topic that has been in a ton of news uh, publications on Instagram, on social media, a ton of people talking about this, about quiet quitting um, and you know how there's been an uptick in that and that it's a, a new trend. We've got influencers talking about it. We have a new Beyonce song that's all about, you know, quitting and uh, moving on and putting yourself first and all these types of things. So what is uh, quiet quitting and, and what should employers be thinking about, Russell? Yeah, so so quiet quitting is, uh, to summarize it, as I understand it, is just kind of putting on the, when employees just kind of hit the brakes and they do the bare minimum to be, you know, passable at the job, but they're not pushing forward, they're not driving growth, they're not uh, super engaged. It's just kind of, showing up and doing the bare minimum so that they don't get fired. And, yeah. and, and so from a, from a, what do you do about, it? I mean, I think there's a couple points for employers to consider. One is how do you prevent it? Um, and two is what do you do when you find someone who's just kind of barely serviceable doing the bare minimum? Um, so, so to tackle the first question, I mean, it, it, we've talked about it on here a number of times, but I think one way you you try to prevent the quiet quitting uh, response is by finding things that engage your employees, um, keeping them invested in the business, invested in their their own growth and personal development, uh, and finding things that that make them um, you know want to commit to the work and do more than just the bare minimum. Yeah, I think it's something to definitely pay attention to. Um, you know, it's obviously something that a lot of workplaces are seeing and um, because it's something that folks are talking about, I think it's something that you want to check in with your workforce, see what's motivating people. I think we've talked a lot about on here and talked a lot with our clients. There's definitely been a lot of changes in the workplace since the pandemic. Um, remote work is one of those, which caused a lot of people to be working more often, um, you know, because the, especially during the pandemic when there wasn't much else to do. So I am, you know, interested in kind of how, that trend has kind of now led to this almost um, backlash of the internet right? of like, okay, we all worked a ton. There's no boundaries between, you know, work and home sometimes in a lot of instances and, and how much uh, this is related to that. And, and kind of it's hard for uh, in a lot of industries to know how much effort people are putting in and it might be slightly delayed in figuring out that people are quiet quitting or are not, really putting in their full amount and trying to find ways to, to motivate them and make sure you're in tune with your workforce. Yeah, that's right. And, I mean, it, it, and you make a good point, too, about the remote work. I mean, it's not the same as coming into work and being around colleagues and being energized by, you know, being part of a group. I mean, it, it's all happening remotely, um, at least in, in certain jobs. So, you know, how do you engage the remote worker um, who, you know, now has other things that they might be spending more time with that are more important or interesting to them than work and so they're just kind of cruising by punching the clock and and moving on i mean again i think like we've talked about here before um you know it's really critical to find those uh points of engagement whether you're in the office or or a remote worker um the second question that i raised is well what do you do when you find people that are quiet quitting how do you manage that when you know maybe their performance is like okay enough. Uh, Sarah, you want to take that one? Yeah, so I, th I think that that's one area where, um, you know, if, if you want to look at what's motivating the workforce, what the role is, you know, a lot, there's a lot of different things we've, we've talked about on, on here, um, you know, from a management perspective, figuring out what is motivating employees um, in their role and making sure that they're feeling supported. Sometimes I think a lot of times we think it's just money throwing money at the um, at the issue will solve it and sometimes that's true and there's different various ways we've talked about on here different bonus structures different th ways to incentivize employees to kind of put them on the same page as the company different types of you know we've talked about phantom equity and different you know financial options but you know kind of to, to an earlier point um about the engagement and other things that employees might be looking for to also start looking at those types of options as well whether it's additional benefits, time off, different, 
different aspects, different things, the engagement in the office uh, so that, that people feel connected to the company and aren't, you know, at home, just quiet quitting and looking around at jobs and feeling disconnected. I think those are all things that employers can consider as ways to combat this problem. Yeah. And, and, and I would just add too that, I mean, if it, the performance is poor enough from your perspective as the employer, um, you manage it, you demand more, you, you say, look, like you're not hitting our expectations. This isn't good enough. Yeah. You got the, the project turned in on time, but it's just very lackluster. It's very, you know, it's not good enough. Like the, the subjective evaluation of this work product is, is it's lousy. It needs to be better. And, and I'm going to manage you affirmatively on, on that as well. And like we've been saying, you know, you document it, you, you do all the right things in terms of managing around it. Um, but I think it's certainly, um, you know, while you want to create an attractive workplace and an engaging workplace for your, for your people, because that'll get the best out of them, um, you know, it's also okay to push. And it's also okay to, to you know, raise expectations if the work product you're getting isn't, isn't good enough. Yeah, I think a part of that as well is just staying on top of of things as well. We've you know managing people, making sure you are paying attention to those metrics or things that you're looking for, the performance, and making sure you're having those conversations with employees so that it doesn't kind of just all of a sudden you realize for months someone hasn't really been getting the job done. Um, so really staying on top of that, uh, especially right now, knowing that this is something that um, is might be happening. Uh, yeah. More well, and I guess you should probably even back up a step. If you don't have expectations, you should have them and you should communicate them. Um, you know, it's one thing to recalibrate the expectations, but at, at a starting point, you know, make sure the employee knows what's expected and that, you know, it's it's good enough for you as the employer. Yeah, exactly. It's all good points. Well, thank you, Russell. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Sarah.